Mr. P's Science and Math Podcasts. For more science and math concepts, search me out on iTunes by typing Papa Podcasts. You can contact me at Mr. P. Lieberman at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Here is what we get. Okay. So we have our table of values, and here are our points. Let's use it. So we have zero here. There's one of our points. There is one of our points. There is one of our points. Uh, and there is one of our points here. Okay. So, here are the points that we have. Now, if we look at our differences, and we're going to talk about it again uh, later on. If we look at the differences here in the x value, x value is down here. So the x axis goes horizontally. The change from one value to the next to the next is always 1. Now, let's look at the difference here. We have the difference here, 5. We have the difference here, 3. We have the difference here of 1. Now, notice how we're going back and expanding in the same direction. So now, let's go from here, from here to here, our difference was 5. From here to here, our difference was 3. From here to here, our difference was 1. So notice how this difference here meet up right at this spot right here. That is a very special point in any parabola. And the point in which the entire parabola hinges on finding the exact finding the exact shape from this main point, this most important point here, this is what we call the vertex. Okay, And the vertex here is at 0, 0. At 0, 0 here we have what we call a line, an axis of symmetry, a line of symmetry in which if I put a magnet here, I will be able to get the same reflection that I have here over on this side. Okay, so we will be talking about this difference and how to help us graph in just a second. But the, the key point here, what I want you to, to really remember as we move on to the next slides is the following. This 1, 3, 5. Again, notice here, 1, 3, 5. Where does it move from? Our vertex. So that is going to be a very important matter, and don't worry about it now, but just keep these numbers off to the side and, and to help you understand eventually what it all means. Okay. So graph the following. y is equal to 2x squared. Same thing now. We're going to be doing a table of values for the following. So take a moment, pause these, this video, and complete... This, the, uh, the table, so find out what the value of y is when x is those values. Then what I want you to do is find the first difference and then try the second difference and then tell me, is the following expression considered quadratic? So pause the video right now. Welcome back. So now what, that you've already tried completing this table of values, let's see if you get the same answers as I do. When x is equal to negative 3, y is equal to 18. When x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to 8. When x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to 2. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. When x is equal to 1, we have our y value is 2. When x is equal to 2, y value is 8. When our x value is 3, our y value is 18. Again, notice here. Okay, and actually, let's uh, let's look at it in terms of the first difference. If we look at the first difference now, from 8 to 18, we get 10. From 8 to 2, we get 6. From 2 to 0, we get 2. From 0 to 2, we get negative 2. From 2 to negative 8, we get negative 6. From 
8 to 18, we get negative 10. So notice here, because these are all different, we know that it is nonlinear. But now let's look at the second difference. From 10 to 6, 4, 6 to 2, 4, 2 to negative 2, 4, negative 2 to 6, negative 6, 4, negative 6 to negative 10, also 4. So because the second difference are all the same, therefore, the following example is quadratic. Okay? And now notice here this difference here, 10, 6, 2, okay? 2, 6, 10. Notice these numbers, they're going in the same order. But again, we're going to look at that and, and look at how this number 2, and if you probably already know where I'm getting at, know where that 2 is going to help play a role in helping us graph this without having to make this whole thing. Why, why do all that? Okay, but I want to show you guys exactly how we put together our graphs before I show you this shortcut. Okay. So let's graph it. So what I have here is I've superimposed both graphs together. Okay. So when we were graphing here, okay, we were plotting our points. Okay, so we had our table of values, and then we're just plotting our points. So our original equation, okay, in blue, here were our points. So our vertex, first point, then our next point, and then the next point. Okay? And we have the same symmetry on both sides. But now here in red is our new equation. Y is equal to 2x squared. Again, the vertex, notice where the vertex is starting. It's at the same spot. So our vertex, look where it's at. It's the spot in which our values for y start to change, start to gradually move in the same direction. So notice we have 2, 8, 18 going in this direction. We have 2, 8, 18 going in this direction. But what is the difference that separates these two differences? That. This is what we call the vertex. The vertex is the location in which we have the symmetry appearing in the same direction or in opposite directions from our main spot, and that's that vertex. Okay. So again, we have the vertex. Again, let's use a different color. Here we have this is what we call this axis of symmetry. Okay. And this axis of symmetry acts like a mirror image. We have the same image appearing here as we do here with our original equation here as we do here. 